Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from My Heap. So, um, you know, the, my last video I said I'm, all that's left is a tailstock, and I was wrong. You know, <laughs> I got in my uh, excitement, I forgot about the lead screw. So today, um, I want to put the lead screw in, and there are a couple things to uh, watch out for. I have a subscriber, his name is Jeff Lawrence, who is uh, also uh, working on an Atlas 10F, encountered some issues when he went to install his lead screw back in uh, with some binding. And um, so he explained his solution to that, which uh, makes perfectly good sense to me. So I want to share that with you. And, and Jeff, uh, thank you for saving me some, um, you know, potential torment, you know, because, yeah, you know, it's hard enough as it is, <laughs> me, me being me. But uh, anyway, so um, without any further ado, let's, uh, I'm going to show you uh, what uh, Jeff encountered uh, with a closer view of the uh, change gearbox end and the, uh, and the uh, change gears uh, and the banjo and what I think uh, would be probably good practice in, in the aligning and that sort of thing. So uh, we'll start that and then uh, we'll install the lead screw. Sorry about that guys, uh, my microphone wireless mic batteries died. So let's let's move the on. The problem Jeff was experiencing was uh, after, you know, if you tighten this stuff up when the run the carriage back toward the headstock, um, if it's misaligned in a bind. So the solution here is to uh, loosen the components before installing the lead screw. So the first thing you want to do is loosen the stud that holds the banjo into place. Um, back it out away from the banjo and loosen the locking nut on the back so that the banjo can move freely. And then finally loosen the uh, two screws that hold the uh, change relief, uh, change direction gearbox in place and you'll see that uh, you've got some movement here allowing uh, the lead screw to align itself when we place it on that end. So before uh, really getting into this I want to show you what I got set up. So I have the uh, uh, half nuts open so it allow the lead screw to slide through and then you know I've, I've already pre-oiled the um, lead screw and you know there's a groove in the lead screw that has to slide on a key that's in the uh, bevel gear that's you know under in, under the apron and then of course you know at the other end we have to um, uh, put the uh, gear on uh, bevel gear on and get it slid into what I call the spider gear on the on, on the end to get it slid in place so um, also take note that I have the uh, carriage in the middle of the uh, lathe to provide some support for the um, lead screw so I give you this angle here thinking that maybe it'd be a little easier to see how this goes uh, from the uh, through the saddle and into the direction change gearbox. So I'll start out by sliding the lead screw through the open half nuts and then aligning, um, trying to align the you know slot or you know the groove the, that's cut into the lead screw onto the key on the bevel gear that runs behind the apron and this takes a little bit you know to kind of try to support it and align it up and get it slid through I'm still working on it I guess again I apologize for the voiceover I, I'll have to pay more attention to the batteries next time so with it slid through we can come up here toward slide the lead screw up toward the change gearbox and of course you know this bevel gear goes on the lead screw and sits up in a in a uh, spot there underneath the uh, gearbox. Now I've put the change direction into neutral hoping that you know it'd be a little easier to line up on the spider gear. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm pushing it up against the spider gear uh, trying to align the uh, the key that's built onto that onto the groove into the lead screw. So you know you have to fiddle around with that a little bit to get in you know to get it started. So Eventually, I'll get it there. Okay, there it went. So I'm going to slide the uh, lead screw um, all the way in, and then we'll move to the other end of the lathe at the uh, uh, at the uh, tailstock in the lead screw so that we can get it in alignment and get it fastened in. So, see you there. So the first thing that we want to do is, in, is to get the lead screw set in position on the tailstock in. 
Um, this provides support for for when we go to adjust the headstock. So the first thing I'll do is I'll move the carriage down toward the end of the screw and engage the half, le uh, half nut lever. This should hold the screw into position so they can't move about uh, and keep it in pretty good alignment. So at this point uh, I'll fasten the tailstock, uh, I mean the lead screw bearing uh, to the bed. Uh, one thing that I did uh, notice after the fact was that uh, I forgot to put a washer uh, that's supposed to go on the lead screw uh, between the lead screw and the bearing. I forgot to put that on. And then here I'm fumbling around because uh, the holes aren't lined up. So I'll need to adjust that. So so once this is in place, uh, we can move back toward the headstock and uh, start aligning and adjusting that end. So at the headstock end of the uh, lathe, I have the carriage brought down as close as I can get it um, to the uh, headstock of the lathe with the half nuts engaged. This should hold the uh, lead screw in you know position where it needs to be. So with that in place, then we can um, snug down the uh, bolts uh, to the direction change gearbox, and uh, it should be set. So I'll do that here after I find the right wrench, of course. Remember I said, it's tough being me. Alright, so here I'm getting them snug down. Okay, the next thing to do is that we need to adjust the stud that locks in the banjo. So what, we'll, what I'll do is uh, I'll take the stud and, and uh, tighten it in until it just till the head of it just touches the uh, banjo so because we don't want to pull the banjo out of alignment remember they're uh, kind of fragile and easy to break so once the uh, head uh, is aligned to where it needs to be on the banjo we can tighten the jam nut down in the back that uh, prevents the um, the locking stud from going in or out at that point so that's what I'm trying to do here and again I think uh, you know, some cutoff wrenches or something would make working back here just a little bit easier because this is kind of tight with the door in the way. So once that's uh, once that's in place, then you know, the gears can be meshed uh, using some paper uh, to set the gap here at the top, and then we can um, you know go ahead and lock the uh, nut that locks the uh, banjo into position. So really, that's all that the, you have to do on this end. Uh, now the uh, 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 headstock end of the uh, lead screw is aligned but recall that I did um, forget to put a washer at the other end of the lead screw so we'll have to buzz back down there real quick and take care of that. So here I am at the uh, tailstock end of the lathe again and I have the carriage moved up here with the half nuts engaged and removing the um, lead screw bearing because I forgot to put this washer on here so we'll get this washer in place where it belongs and uh, give a little oil on the shaft and <clears throat> reassemble this thing. So I'm going to put a little oil here in the bearing. I just uh, think at this initial stage you probably can't have too much oil because things are sitting a while and that sort of thing. Now I'm having a problem getting it on here. It's a, it's a pretty uh, close fit and uh, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, I tried to uh, open the uh, half nuts to give me a little bit of play in the screw and end up having to move the uh, carriage down a little bit as you'll see here in just a second that uh, I'll have to move the carriage down a little bit more to uh, get enough play okay well with the bearing on the end of the lead screw now all I have to do is uh, just line up the holes and put the, put the little quarter 20 bolts back in but before I do that I want to move the carriage back down and and get the half nuts closed so that it's held in position. So one thing that I noticed um, on mine is that uh, I am only have one of the uh, jam nuts and I think there are supposed to be two 
on the end of the lead screw. Although I'm not sure what thread uh, size and pitch this is. If somebody knows, um, if you'd post a note in the comment for me, that'd be great. Um, so I can get another jam nut. I don't want it to work loose. <clears throat> so here I'm just tightening up the uh, the uh, two little bolts that hold the uh, bearing into place. By the way, this uh, bearing is a, I think they're considered a breakaway bearing, so if you uh, crash the lathe, that's actually supposed to break um, before it tears anything up. So on goes the other washer and finally the um, lock nut. Now the idea here is that you want to tighten the lock nut up, um, or the nut up, just enough to eliminate the uh, play in the screw where it you know, could slide through the bearing and uh, the threads on mine are a little stiff. I don't have a I don't have a die um, that size to to chase the threads to clean them up so um, here I'm using that uh, uh, super wrench you know <laughs> to get it tightened on there <clears throat> so one way to um, kind of adjust the end plate since the half nuts are uh, engage the lead screw, we can take the traverse handle and move it back and forth uh, to see how much play is in the lead screw and then we can adjust accordingly. Once you have um, the lead screw um, uh, in play uh, removed, you can add the second lock nut and lock it down so it can't go anywhere. Now that I have the lead screw installed, I thought I would uh, check, uh, test it out here. So I'm moving the carriage down so you can see and I'm engaging. Now I didn't notice that, uh, well I noticed that I was having a hard time getting it engaged like it, it wasn't. So um, I thought I would go ahead and, you know, I mean it's feeding but the half nut didn't engage like I thought. So I changed the direction of the lead screw and uh, and then I noticed that uh, the nut engaged all the way and it seems to feed just fine. What I didn't realize until after I made the video was that uh, I w it was actually hitting the top of the thread of the lead screw and not sitting down between it. So. You know, so so far it seems to work. Now I do have a question here. Um, you know, on, on a normal lathe, the change direction levers on the side of the head, and this one has a change gearbox here on the front. Now my question is, can you? Uh, is this okay to change while uh, the lathe is running? Now I know on the on the normal um, change gear on the side, you should um, um, you know stop the motor and then uh, change direction and then start the motor up. So. That's the question. Can this one be uh, changed running, or should I be stopping the lathe uh, when I'm changing from forward to reverse or neutral or whatever? So um, now the only thing here that I didn't check was the uh, automatic cross feed. So um, pull the handle out, and sure enough, it works. So I'm pretty happy with that, and I run the uh, carriage up and down the lathe and didn't seem to have any issues with binding. So I think it's set up pretty good. So the uh, only other thing to do here is uh, to replace this or put the cover on here that I'm missing here. So the last thing to do here is uh, for, for this video is to put the cover on here. And this cover is held um, on a screw on the side of the head and then a small socket head cap, cap screw here on the front of the gear change box. Uh, pretty easy to install. We'll slide the, uh, slide the top in underneath the uh, screw and then we'll put in the socket head cap screw here and snug everything up. So I do have uh, uh, one more request on uh, the door of the uh, gear cover. There should be some sort of clasp or something that uh, catches this guard here, um, right here. And uh, I, you know, mine's missing. It catches right there, and you know, to keep keep the door from you know popping open or flying open while you're using the lathe or whatever. Uh, if you could send me a picture of that, uh, that would be awesome. You know, I'm just kind of curious what that looks like. Is that something I can make? Is it something I should be looking for? Uh, you know, I obviously want to be safe or maybe just stick a screw down in there to catch it. So other than that, uh, hey, look, I just want to tell everybody once again, thanks so much for taking the time to watch these videos. Uh, the interaction has just been uh, amazing to me, you know, and, and I appreciate the all the help and the advice and, and uh, the humor and, and everything else that goes along with it. And, uh, you know, thanks so much for, you know, taking the time to do that. Uh, I want to also um, give a little shout out to uh, Rich for making something for nothing. Uh, Rich said that he would make a nut for me. Now, he doesn't have uh, 
the the stock that I I drew up at, at uh, drew the nut up as, but uh, what he's got I think will work just fine. I mean this is uh, something to hold the tool post down on. So I'm thinking next video is tail stock, and then uh, uh, we're ready to you know to the point where I'm going to have to start using this machine. So other than that, um, God bless you and have a blessed day.